Welcome home racing fans. Hope you're having a good one out there. It's time to take a closer look at the latest from Carrera. A lot of people are talking about this car, the new C8R. And uh, I have to say, I haven't had too much time with it. But long enough to know they've really done a fantastic job on the outside. I mean, looking at prototype photos, obviously nothing is perfect. But I have to tell you, I I'm impressed. Um, the fit, the finish, the markings, the detail level, just uh, uh, impressive to me. And they've done this in the past with prior releases in the vets. You know, nothing new here in line. But just, um, just a great looking car overall. I've heard a lot of positive comments about it. You know, few people aren't that impressed. Yeah, that's the way the hobby is, you know. It, uh, it either floats your boat or it don't, right? Well, this one does. It's pretty sharp. And it has, uh, like I made my comment, big shoes to fill. Because I can tell you now that <laughs> this has been one of my favorite cars from Carrera for a very long time. The C7, when it came out, just blew us away in more ways than one it was just a finely detailed car if you took a caliper to it it was about as accurate as you could ask for and when you took the time to tune it uh it was a fast mover and i'll tell you um i'll even go one more <laughs> with you we'll go back to the c6 um I remember when this was released, and a lot of enthusiasts were very impressed with it. And again, <laughs> as you can see, this has been tuned for our track. But um, with a little bit of tuning, this car could flat get after it. And it looked really good. The shape, everything. They just captured the car. So here we are, C6, C7, and now this one. So... We're going to see what this thing has going for it under the hood. Um, if, I'm a, if I'm a betting man sometimes, and I'm betting that this is just going to be a very smooth running car. It's going to need a little bit of work for out here on the wood, but I think it'll be worth it. So we'll get right to it. Something I need to highlight that we don't normally do, but we should, is uh, to check the case, okay? The back case right here, your little door. And inside there, of course... They have instructions in a thousand different languages. I mean, I think there's one in here that just goes ack, 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 ack. I mean, they cover everything. So plenty of instructions in there. Uh, you have some spare mirrors, your braid, of course. But now we see this little guide. Um, these have been in cars before. And this is a shorter, shallower guide for compatibility with different track systems like old school electric you know classic things like that so this guide is in the back of the case so if that's the track system you have make sure you check it okay so we're going to get to the inside as you can see i've got a pretty big mess going on here <laughs> but there is a method behind the madness so to speak uh, first of all here is our new chassis as you can see and i don't see any surprises except for the fact that it is lighted front and rear. Carrera changed this about a year and a half ago, and now the analog cars, the ones that should have lights, have them. You don't have to buy the digital version. I'm very happy about that. Of course, we have a bigger board up here in front, and it looks like there's a contest to see how many quick disconnects you can put in a car. If so, Carrera wins, but it looks a lot like a digital board, but it isn't. It's also to uh, swamp the polarity right here, this little switch, so you can change directions on the track. Um, but the reason that you see the other chassis in the background is a lot of the similarities. So let's get right to it. Um, this car, you know, the wheelbase, 85 millimeter, 84.60, and so is the Ford GT, it's natural adversary. Same thing, okay? The track width back here, it's the same. About 62 millimeter, just perfect. And so is the C7, same thing, okay? Just same wheelbase, same rear track. That's good. These are all going to be a little close competitors. 
Um, the most important thing though is the wheels. Now normally Carrera it seems has a contest that <laughs> every Friday they're going to invent a new wheel to make sure that we don't have any aftermarket tires. Well such is not the case thankfully. This time they've used the same wheel as what's on the C7 and what is on the Ford GT. So um, the same tire fits so I'm glad they kept with this wheel. So for a Paul Gage aftermarket tire you're looking at the uh, 2012.5 LMXD uh, extra deep there because the, this rib right here is just a little taller than normal and the tire fits just great all you got to do is a little bit of light sanding and you are good to go if you want silicone uh, that's fine the uh, quick slicks um, CA02 that that silicone fits these tires wonderfully I mean it's a it's a great fit so if you want silicone you're going to use that for the quick slicks as far as the rest of the mechanical everything else is the same E200 motor this one benched out 19,700 rpm which is about average they can go from high 18s to low 20s so this one's right there in the game 9 to 27 gearing and of course then there's dual magnets one here and one here and solid front axle so like I said no surprises and uh, and I'm glad for that because it keeps these cars in the GT line um, closer competitors so you know if you're just getting together with friends snapping the cars on your plastic track and going they're all going to be pretty equal so I'm really happy that uh, uh, Carrera didn't do anything uh, crazy in the change department so anyway we're going to give this a little bit of a tune-up here before the road test, but we're going to talk about that coming right up. So talking about the road test, to me, I've said this before, it really isn't fair to um, take these cars, ready to run cars like this, Carrera, Skeletric, Pioneer, and bring them out here on a wood track and judge them. It's This is not where they were designed to be. They were designed to be on plastic track with magnets and they work great that way. So if you ride a track like this, non-magnet, take responsibility for your actions. I know I do and I don't expect these cars to run like you know a slotted thunder slot NSR. That's not these cars. So kinda not fair. So this time I'm just gonna go ahead and do a few mods first because you know the stock tires don't work that well this and that I really don't want the car to look bad it's uh, it just needs a little bit of tuning and that's what we're gonna do before we road test okay we'll just talk about the mods that I have done I sanded the wheels chewed the wheels up first then I installed the tires and I used the Paul Gage tires that we listed and uh, they are ready to rock and roll then uh, I added a little bit of UV glue here at the motor to stop it from rocking because that can cause some chatter too so and the UV glue really strong but it's not really permanent so if you wanted to take this motor out you could pop it out but now I got that nice and solid and then up front I sanded the wheels chewed them then I put the tires on I brought the diameter down a little bit not too much but a little bit and got them trued um, so those are looking good. I did take the spring out of the, the stock guide assembly here. I just don't care for it. And then finally, as the last mod there, the slot invasion uh, guide. I don't know if you guys know about slot invasion, but they make some really cool stuff for Carrera. And this guide blade is one of them. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, and uh, it really minimizes this side to side here in our routed tracks I really like that so that's all I've done we haven't replaced the guide done any major mods other than that so our investment is um, a little bit of time a pair of tires you know, and a guide blade so now we will see how it runs yeah never ceases to amaze me just with a few little mods will do just a little bit of effort can do to a car and transform it 
When we bench tested it, it was just hopping, wheel hop. Not very impressive. But when you own a wood track, there's just some things you have to do, sort them out. Man, this car is quick. There is nothing wrong with this. Oh yeah, tracking really good. I'm definitely happy. And it didn't break the bank. Yep. I can buy another. Well, alright. I have to tell you. Pudgy or not. Best lap. 3729. That's very respectable. And that's just a few mods. Just think about the other things we can do. Didn't even change the guide. That'll do. So I thought I'd share this with you. Okay. The new car. C8. 3729 fast slap. The C7. 3689. And the Ford. 3749. Look how close that is. But there is something very interesting about this and that is on these cars here on these two as you can see I did the guide mod conversion okay so I went ahead and I did that conversion and with this car all I did was add the slot invasion guide blade so it's still not fully seated. The front tires are supporting. However, these lap times, very, very close. So um, I think you'll find that with most of the GT line. But I just wanted to test, you know, old versus new here and here. And against uh, the Ford as a, you know, a natural nemesis so that's about as close as it gets I think anybody picks this car up it's gonna fit just perfectly within the series well you're not gonna hear any complaints from me um, some people don't like Carrera don't know why everybody has their reasons but this is a great running slot car and you ought to check the lap times from the latest slot at Mercedes because <laughs> this thing is pretty close to it. Um, with a little bit of tuning, you can just make magic happen. And that's what happens when you have a wood track. You advance guys out there, you're going to tune. Okay. And these are all cars with stock components. You know, we can go further. We can add aluminum wheels, precision fit bushings and axles. I mean, we haven't even done any of that yet. I haven't even done the guide mod on this. I have on those. So, to me, I'm very impressed. It's a great run slot car. It just takes a little bit of work. Now, you know, the whole elephant in the room, Skeletric, is coming out with theirs. Well, if you look at their MSRP of $65 against $38, um, <laughs> you guys can have at it because... Um, if you're going to club race and you're going to have an environment like this where you're going to tune. So let's just say you're going to, you know, change out the wheels. You're going to go full aluminum. You're going to do a full rebuild like I did back on the Camaro. Well, if you're going to do that, why start with a car with, with an entry price of 65 instead of 38? If you're going to bling it out, well, then start with something less expensive and... Hands down, um, I think this car is a great value for the price right now, at least here in the USA. So, you can spend more if you want to. I'm not really sure you're going to get a whole lot more. I don't see Skeletric outfitting it with, you know, full aftermarket um, aluminum, everything that you see in the competition brands. We'll find out when we get one. I don't want to make any comments just yet but the entry-level price of that car yeah 
That's just that's just sticker shock to me. If I'm going to spend that kind of money, then I'll go with the competition brand. This price point is right where it should be. It's easy on most budgets out there. A lot of you don't have, you know, um, <laughs> a big slot car budget. And you just want some nice cars to, to race with your family and friends. And so for that kind of money, I don't think you can beat this car. And like I said, we just talked about small investment here. A pair of tires, a little guide blade, and a little bit of time. And this car just gets after it. So uh, hats off to Carrera. Great job. Um, just, uh, just a nice slot car. Goes well with the line. So if you're going to start a series with the GT Series or you already have one using Carrera, I really can't see any reason why you wouldn't want to pick this car. So anyway, always look forward to your comments online, and we'll see you there.